Hello, church family. It sure is good to see. We got a church full today. Praise the Lord. Look at all the young people. Look at all the young people we've got in this church right here. Praise God. Look around. Hallelujah. This is what it's all about. Full of life. We've got, we've got them from this age right here all the way to this age. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, um, we pray. There's been a lot of praying going on about How we're weathering through this COVID stuff. How are you making it? How are you doing? Are you making it okay? We really want to know if there's... Um, we, we, there's been a disconnect because of the COVID. So if there's something going on in your life or somebody else, let somebody know. Kind of like Kim was talking about in the neighborhood. We're a big family. We're a part of the family of God. And we all want to make it. Nobody wants us to make it more than God wants us to make it. And it's not easy. So let's hang in there together and let's just do it. And, you know, we, we, we've, we've designated 2021 as the year of the family. The year of the family. We want our families to make it. We want our families to be strong. The enemy's trying to, to hit us from every angle, but we, we want the families to be strong. To make it. And, then, you know, we've talked about... We've talked about dedicating our life to God. We did that last Sabbath. We talked, about, we talked about prayer. These are fundamental blocks, building blocks that, that, that will strengthen our families in Christ Jesus. And today, what are we talking about today? Can anybody tell the theme so far? Our, our, our praise uh, team did a wonderful job just painting this out. It's the family, the Word, the Word of God in our family. The Word of God is so incredibly powerful. I want to read a scripture to you to kind of get things started in Psalms chapter 34. Psalms chapter 34. Uh, before I read from the Word, I'm going to lift up a quick prayer, okay? Father in heaven, we pray for the Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that your words are spirit and they are life. Would you please just may these words just, just come alive in our heart today as, 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 we, as we lift up your word and, and the saving power that's in your word today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is my testimony. So forgive me if I get a little bit excited about this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and, and, he, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked into him, and they were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him, and he delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Give God a chance in your family. You know those, the, the song, uh, Wonderful Words of Life? When I hear, for the first time, when I heard that song, when I heard you singing that song today, it was almost like my child telling me, oh, speak to me these wonderful words of life. That's something that we can do as a family. We can share the Word of God with our children. We can share the Word of God with our children. There is power in the Word of God. I want to tell you something about this Word right here. It's dynamite in this Word right here. Dynamite. Dunamis. The words that I speak are spirit and they are life. Give these words to your family. Give it to your spouse. Give it to your children. Read these words right here because they are powerful. Powerful. Uh, you know, I used to have a... Y'all probably didn't know this because it, before I, it was before I come here. I used to have a power stroke diesel. You know, Ford, power, stroke, diesel. <laughs> Anybody get that? <laughs> Stacy wouldn't get it. He, he's got a Dodge, but, but I'm not going to pick on him or nothing. <laughs> Like that, but power stroke diesel. I was so proud of my truck. I loved driving that green. It was green. My favorite color is green. 
And I loved driving that big green truck, you know, and because and, it had such power. And one day I was driving my, my, my son to school and, I, and, I, and it uh, dropped him off. And on the way back, it started sputtering, sputtering. And I went, what's wrong with this? I mean, my truck, my power stroke truck is sputtering. And it, and it pulled over on the side of the road and I cranked on it, cranked back up. Well, I drove on home. Uh, next day I run, I, I, we didn't live with a mile from the grocery store. I went to the grocery store and back. And next day I was running another errand and it did it again. This time, I could not get it to crank up. I said, what is wrong with my truck? My power stroke diesel truck, what's wrong with it? And so I called my friend who's a mechanic, and uh, he, he had a records, and he come pick me up. And it was, on a, it was on a Friday, so I'm thinking, hmm, boy, you know, I'm not going to get my truck until next week and, and everything for sure. No, and no telling what's wrong with it. I thought it was something major wrong. I was thinking fuel pump probably is what I was thinking was wrong with it. Uh, you know, fuel filter dug thing, but you know, I don't know. Uh, so my friend calls me back in about an hour, just an hour later. And he said, I got your truck fixed. I said, you got my truck fixed? What, what was wrong with it? He said, you had a tank problem. I said, tank problem? Oh, fuel, fuel pump, fuel pump. No, it's out of fuel. <laughs> out of fuel. <laughs> Friends, there is power in this word right here. Are you out of fuel? Are you running out of fuel? Or, or is your light about to go out? Friends, there's power in this word right here, this Bible. Uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greeks. Friends, I want you to know there's power in the gospel. Power to change your life. I'm a testimony of it. I'm not a preacher. I've told you before, I'm a witness. I know what God can do in your life. I know what can happen in your life. This is where the gospel is at right here. You're not going to find it on CNN. You're not going to find it on Fox News. You find it right here in this word right here. You love your children. You want them to make it through some hard times that they got in front of them, and they do. Introduce them to the Word of God. Tell them that's where you go to. This is who you turn to in life when you've got problems. This is who's got the answers for your life right here. Jesus Christ is found in the Word of God here. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. So I thought today, rather, you know, I've said this, I, I've been preaching a long time, but I think the most powerful thing in the world is testimonies. We have a whole church full of testimonies of what can happen in your life when you introduce Jesus Christ. When you, when you, the fuel, the word, Jesus says, the words that I speak are spirit and they are life. These words, when you put some fuel in your body, this is what can happen to you. So I'm going to ask Aaron to come up first. Aaron, if you come up here. And uh, I've got several people lined up today that's just going to kind of share Aaron, I know that, uh, that you and your family love the Lord. I can tell by the way you, you operate, the way that you run your life, the way, that, uh, the way that you talk, the way that you shared. Tell me what's your source, or tell your church family. There you go. You know, I, I'm, I'm not usually nervous in this spot. Uh, because... You know, I, I, I like to talk, <laughs> but um, I want to be real for you this morning. Uh, this, this past year, you know, being in my box, uh, drafting in my 10 by 10 spot, you know, life kind of gets to you and, and you, you, you kind of get bored with with what's going on and uh i stepped away a little bit mm -hmm. and uh i got bored with what what life was about and i thought well you know i gotta keep my i gotta keep my job i gotta keep moving forward and uh you know the quiet 10 by 10 that i, that I live in in the, my eight hours a day 10. <laughs> Uh, I started listening, watching uh, Netflix 
and letting media kind of come into my into my life mm. and I would come out of my house and I would go into my box and I would let God stay at the door and my wife good woman that she is gets up at five o'clock in the morning and goes into where my old office was and she would listen to God's word every morning and I saw my wife being faithful to God's word praise God and uh, you women out there you have a huge power over your man. Influence. Uh, for good or for evil. Choose to do good for your, for your husband. And uh, I, I thought, you know, the first of the year came about and, and my wife very gently says, why don't we read the Bible together as a family? There's this, there's this new thing that uh, uh, Spirit of Prophecy is doing where you can, you can mark off uh, the Bible. And I thought, you know, that's a, that's a great idea. I, we, could, we could do that. And weeks went past, and um, I, I didn't. And then I, I thought, you know, this, this, we need to do something. I, I've, I've had little worships with Samuel. And Joanna has had worships with Samuel. But we've never really poured over God's word as a family. So one morning, I, one, one evening, I was like, you know, let's, let's get together and, and start. Just start reading God's word. And uh, we started right at Genesis, and we began to read God's word. And uh, we began to pray together as a family. Praise God. Not, not just pieces of us, but together as a family. We began to, to really start pushing, uh, reading God's word. And it, it really didn't have any effect on my relationship outside of the house until I started realizing that, hey, wait a minute, I'm going in the wrong direction. Uh, I, I'm, I, me, I'm starting to realize that I'm asleep. Wow. And I have allowed God to, I have allowed Satan to lull me asleep with media. Yes. I've allowed Satan to lull me to sleep with Facebook. I have mm -hmm. allowed Satan to lull me to sleep with YouTube. Wow. And I decided I, I, I got to stop this. I got to move toward God. And I've been having, this is the real part, I've, I've had some struggles in my life that I have not been able to uh, have victory over. And I really have kind of like, all right, God, you know, th these, these spots in my life, I've tried to come to you and I've tried to have you cleanse these things out of my life and I've tried and I've tried and I'm like, you know what, forget it. And a few weeks ago, uh, about two months, um, the pastor has said something about, uh, you know, addictions can come in all kinds of forms. Um, and I'm like, God, I, this spot in my life, you, I, I, you, you, I've tried to fix it, and it just never gets fixed. And I thought, you know, I'm going to give this a try, mm. where. I'm going to try to fill my that spot of my life with you. Amen. Praise God. And see what happens. And I prayed very specifically, Lord, you, you, you're going to have to take this part of my life away. Amen. Because I, I've, 
I've never been able to fix it. And I, uh, I realized by giving God that piece of my life and filling that box in my life with God. Hallelujah, that's it right there. He was able to give me the, the, the peace and the strength to say, you know what, when that peace, when Satan throws that in my face, I've been starting to turn back to God and say, God, you, you, you took this away from me yeah. before. Amen. And I'm not going to let Satan recontrol this spot in my life. Amen. And it is hard. Yeah. And when, when Satan throws that little itch or that little, those little temptation spots in your life, I've recognized them. And I said, God, you, you, you're going to have to take this. Yeah. And each time that Satan comes back to me, I do not know. God, you're going to have to take this. You have to free me. Amen, brother. Amen, Aaron. And with pushing God into my life, he will push those things out. That's right, Aaron. Amen. And so, <clears throat> if, if, if God can love me, boy, he can love you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, it is, I, I've struggled with the salvation issue all of my life. Whether I'm, you know, whether I'm on this side of the scale or if I'm on this side of the scale. And if I put just a little bit too much on this side of the scale, I, well, you know, forget, I'm lost. I have finally realized that I have been worshiping God in a um, in an abomination way of trying to make God love me and trying to make sure that I do the right things so that God will love me for me. And I'll tell you what, it don't work. Because God loved me. Amen. Here it is. <laughs> Give me chill, Mom. And I will no longer serve that God again. Babylon. Because that is Satan. My God loves me. Amen. And accepts me right now. Amen. And not only that, I am saved because he said so. Amen. Not because of what I feel that says about me. I'm sorry for the tears. That's just who I am. Yes. Yeah. I am so glad that God loves me. Not for what I see, but for what he sees in me, which is Christ Jesus. Yes. And I am so thankful. That he loves me for me. Amen. And he will make me, he will, he will make in me what he promised he would do. He will fulfill that in me. 
And he will mold me and he will shape me and he will create in me a new spirit, a new heart, and a new life day after day if I will just keep my eyes on him. Amen. I have discovered the power of God's word. Amen. And he that sure. is, he will save us. He has saved us. We don't have to do anything to get his favor. His favor is there even before we ask for the favor. Yeah. For a lifetime. Yeah. And uh, I just want to praise God because it's all, it's all God. Amen. Thank you, Aaron. Boy, that, that was better than I hoped. Praise God. Uh, scriptures to support what he said here is, is um, you got, if you got that, that, that sin that's beating you up, the devil's making you think, you know, hey, you might as well give up. You're not, you call yourself a Christian. Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2. It's time to lay aside that sin that so easily besets us. How? By fixing our eyes on Jesus. Fixing our eyes. There's a, you can't stomp sin out of your life, but you can crowd it out with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Andrea, would you come up, please? You know, Andrea's found out that, that she wants the very best for her family, uh, her and Stephen. And because of that, they, they have introduced their children and their family to the Word of God. So just share what you'd like to share. Yes. Okay, so like Aaron was saying, um, God loves us for who we are, not what we can do. And we want our kids to know that. Um, so I, I grew up with family worship um, my whole life, and I always appreciated that. Um, I liked the time that we were together as a family, and I felt a peace and calm um, when we were together spending time with God. And I want Ryan and Ashlyn to experience that, um, that peace and clarity that God gives us when he is our focus, um, putting him at the very beginning of your day before you get out of bed. Just even if it's a quick prayer, just it sets the routine for the rest of their day. Um, so I, I wrote down a few things because I can't remember it all. So um, the fundamental reason we want our children to know God is, um, you know, we want him to know God because we want him to, them to know him personally. Um, I want them to know he's real for themselves, not because we've told them that he is. I want them to know God's purpose for their life and to fulfill that purpose. Um, and if God is in their life, then he will give them all the resources and strength and tools that they need. Um, I want them to know that with God, they can accomplish anything they set out to do. I want them to know the importance of asking God's guidance in every decision Amen. that they make. Amen. Amen. I want them to believe and claim God's promises and remember that he is always with them and will never leave them. Amen. even when they don't feel God's presence. Amen. Good. I want them to be able to focus on God so they don't get distracted by Satan's lies Amen. or thoughts that he puts in their head. I want them to feel safe and at peace, trusting God completely when bad things happen to them. I want them to know the importance of being connected to God constantly so they have strength to avoid making decisions that will hurt them or make them unhappy. I want them to know that God will always love them and accept them no matter what. I want them to know that this world is only temporary and have hope that one day soon all our loved ones will be with us again with God in heaven. That's right. And I want them to know that God is all they need. So. Amen, Andrew. Andrew, thank you. A mother in Israel. Amen. Praise God. Took a lot of courage to get up here too, by the way, <laughs> in front of all you people. Uh, Shirley? Shirley, uh, I don't know if anybody... Y'all have always known Shirley. I haven't known Shirley as long as y'all have known Shirley. But let me tell you what. This lady loves Jesus Christ. And, and she won't boast on herself, but I'm going to brag. It's okay to brag and be proud of somebody that, that's in Jesus Christ. She, she is on fire for Jesus Christ, but there's a reason she's on fire. She, she lets the words that I speak her spirit in her life. She fills her life with the power of God. Good morning, church family. This morning, I want to share a short little video of somebody that I've become very acquainted with 
and it's Chaplain Barry Black. He is the 62nd uh, chaplain for the Senate, and he's been there at Capitol Hill for Hill for two, since 2003, so 18 years he's been there. And before that, he was a Navy chaplain uh, for 30 years, U.S. Navy chaplain for 30 years. He's an Adventist. He lives, he breathes, he talks about God mm -hmm. every day yes, and he shares does. him. Yes, he does. He is a powerful man. And We've had this book. This is so funny. We've had this book in our library at home. I asked Jay, I said, have you read this book? And he says, no. And I said, I haven't read it either. But I just got introduced to this guy, more so was after the riots at the first of the year. And then there was an interview. And I don't know who talked about it here at church. It might have been I, yeah. the Tidwells. But yeah. I went home and I had that in the back of my head, I have to watch this, but it was an interview with Anderson Cooper and it talked about that day and what he felt. So I'm not gonna go into that, but I'm just gonna tell you, YouTube it. I mean, we have technology that kind of drags us down, but we have technology we can take advantage of and we can see more things ever. But this was an amazing interview, which drove me into really listening to him and it went to this, uh, video that was a prayer breakfast um, that he had in 2017 at the Capitol for the president, the vice president, Congress, and everybody else involved at that time up there. I mean, this is powerful. So we're gonna, I'm just going to show you a little clip of this, and then I'll talk a little bit more. Moreover, moreover, I just, I said, I got to get to know this man who died for me. So now it was not just for the nickels that I started reading the word. It was to try to find this man. And, and as I searched the scriptures, I, I, it was like, a, a, a Zeffirelli movie with the man with no name. I, I, I kept finding him in, in Genesis, he's Shiloh. Yeah. In Exodus, he's the I am. In Numbers, he's the star and scepter. Amen. In Deuteronomy, he's the rock. In, in, in 1 Samuel, he's the Lord of hosts. Right. In Job, he is the redeemer. In Psalms, he is the great shepherd. In Proverbs, he is the beloved. I kept running into that man. And Isaiah, Amen. he's wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. And Daniel, he's the fourth man in the fiery furnace. In Micah, he is the one who's going forth of old, is from everlasting to everlasting. In Zechariah, he is the branch. In Malachi, he is the messenger of the covenant. Matthew calls him savior. Mark calls him son of man. Luke calls him the great physician. John calls calls him the word made flesh. Acts says he is the one who will mobilize us to witness. Philippians says God has exalted him so that at his name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. First Thessalonians says he is the one who will descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and Jude says he's able to keep me without stumbling or slipping and present me without fault, without blemish before the presence of his glory with unspeakable ecstatic delight in triumphant joy and exultation. And John said... I was in the spirit on the Lord's day on that isle of Patmos in the Aegean Sea. I saw him high and lifted up. He is Alpha. He's Omega. He is beginning. He is ending. And so because I kept meeting that man, my hope does not rest in the various branches of government 
executive, legislative, or judicial. My hope does not rest in the alliances that we build. My testimony is simply this. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I Praise dare God. not trust the sweetest flame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking Amen. sand. God bless you. Amen. Amen, Shirley. Praise the Lord. Oh, if that does not inspire you, I've watched that so many times, and I can't, I just get so <laughs> excited when I hear that. He, and I, I've went, listened to so many of his sermons on YouTube. I must tell you, you want a book to read? This is his story, and it is powerful, powerful. I want to tell you, there's so many things that have got me excited, <laughs> and I don't know where to even begin. Yet. This book I read, and if you haven't read this book, Ay, ay, ay. This is what drove me to a, the idea that I have got, yeah, your book. That's my book. <laughs> I, I, I said, who is that? That's Morris Menden. <laughs> what got me excited about this book was this relationship yeah. that Cindy was having. With, wow, she found this relationship with Jesus. And I said, boy, I want this relationship. Yes. Oh, what am I, I want this relationship. And through a year ago, with all that was going on, you know, and I know I'm not the only one, that causes a lot of unrest in our hearts. It caused a lot of unrest in my heart. You know, and me and Marilee would walk in the mornings, and she started talking about something that her dad had told her about, Bob, about, and his name was Morris Venden. Morris Venden. I don't know. And then she'd play, we'd be talking, and she says, I gotta, I gotta, here we go again with YouTube, I gotta, I gotta play something for you. And we'd walk and we'd listen to this, and I'm going, who is this? Because he has sermons, he has sermons that you can listen to. They're on righteousness by faith, and I'm going, boy, that sounds kind of deep, I don't know. <laughs> but I started listening, and there's 20 of them. Sin, forgiveness, the cross, I, I mean, and I would sit 30 minutes, I'd listen to these, and he kept saying what the main thing he kept saying was, spend time with God. Yes. Spend time yes. every day with God. Yes. That's our laboring. We gotta labor. And it's not about what we do that gives us the right to heaven, the right to release us. It's not about what we do. We can do all these things. We can pay our tithes. We can come to church. We, we can be vegetarians. We can be vegans. Yeah. But this isn't where it's <laughs> at. This isn't where it's at. What is where it's at is a relationship with Jesus and to have him as our best friend. And you have to think about this. How do you form relationships? How do you yeah. form those best friends? you got to spend time with them. And so I, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get up in the mornings. I'm going to get extra early. i got to go to work at 630. But, hey, I'm going to get up early. And I'm going to spend time with him. And I started reading Desire of Ages. Started looking. I started um, spending time in the Gospels. And I've read Desire of Ages before. I read Desire of Ages when I was in a <laughs> deep, deep, deep valley. Yeah. But boy, this time it really spoke to me. Because the more time you spend with Jesus, the more time... You want to do what is right. You want, yeah. to, you want to pay back to him what he's done so much for you. Yes. And then it started me. Then I started looking for more. I started looking for more things. I started looking at 3ABN. I started listening to Dwight Nelson. I started listening to Doug Batchelor on Amazing Facts. I started listening to music because I felt like I got to get to Jesus. Does that sound familiar? Anybody who's been listening to the Collinsworth uh, on Pandora, there's a song, I Gotta Get to Jesus. It's almost like it became my theme song. Yeah. I Gotta Get to Jesus. Taste Beautif and see that the Lord is good. It's a beautiful song. And the thing in, about Collinsworth, I'm just going to put a little uh, advertisement for them. They, their songs have so much, if you start listening to those words, they just, mm, they just speak to you. 
And so, you know, now I'm listening to more songs, I'm, pr I'm reading, I, uh, yeah, and then we've, I found out about this book. After I listened to all those sermons, I started, we found about a book, It's Who You Know. And I said, where did this come from? So I started reading this book, and all at once it shows up out here in our hallway. Yeah. This is a story about Morris Venden telling you about a relationship with God. And it, believe me, I'm an average person. I don't, I can't, I don't want to read all these, I can't get really deep in things. This one, I'm just telling you, this is a wonderful book. And there, it's out there in our hallway. And it talks about having a relationship with Jesus. So, my big thing is I want to memorize scripture. This is so hard for me. Ah, I can't get these, get these verses in there. But I become more and I become more acquainted with them. It's my big thing is I, I want to memorize scripture. I want to spend more time with Jesus. I want to learn more about him. And I realized if by chance I didn't spend that time with him, and I'm not talking about, you know, reading my devotional book and reading a few scriptures and having my hand on that door and then getting in my car and doing my little 10-minute prayer before I get to work. I mean, I, wanted, I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to just spend Praise more God. time with him and get to know who he wanted, where he was. And I found that if I didn't do that, I felt, I don't know, I, I felt kind of empty inside. I don't Missed know. I didn't feel like I had. I, I guess I had run out, run out of gas. Run out yeah. of fuel. Run out of fuel. Power stroke diesel. Out of fuel. So, you know, <laughs> I decide I need that armor. There's an, there, it talks about the armor of God to wear in Ephesians 6, yeah. um, 10 through 18. Put all, the, put all that armor on of God. You know, the, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, um, the sword, the, Bi the Bible. So I needed that. I need that extra. I need that to, to, to be protected during the day. And uh, I realized that God, I would talk to him throughout the day. I'd start praying for people, patients that I was taking care of. I'd say a little prayer for him or something that was going on in somebody's life, in my friend's life. I'd catch myself. I wanted to pray about it. And, uh, and I started just thanking him for even just the simple things in life. I became just more aware that God is around. And I still wanted more. So there's another verse in the Bible, and this verse just makes me, it's kind of like listening to that sermon. I listen to that. I have a workout room, and we have a TV in there, and I can do the YouTube. And it's like, I says, i got to listen to a sermon. And I've listened to more Barry Black sermons. There is so many out there from, you know, three years ago, four years, four years ago, but he is just, he gets me going in the morning and I go, Ugh. you know, I want to remember that. I want to, you know, use that today or whatever. But anyway, there's a verse in the Bible. It's in Romans 8, 28, 29. And you, you guys, you, everybody knows this verse. I've seen it so many times in the last year. I don't know if God's just trying to say, you got to have this, but it says, I am persuaded. Um, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, principalities. This is another thing is, when I don't know what a word is, I look it up. Just look, and we can do that on our phones real quick. Look at that word is. Principalities, meaning high-ranking evil, supernatural powers, as well as the power of sin and evil in operation in this world. Mm -hmm. Boy, I mean, that's big. Yeah, I can't get I, you. I cannot get up, go up against that. Uh, so... For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, or principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from what? The love of God. The love of God through Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from that. So... Um, we just got to have that in our hearts. I got to have that every day. We all need that every day. And there's something this last, and you can see Jesus is around all over. We, I was at the dentist office. Hate the dentist office. But I went and saw Doug. <laughs> and I, I was looking up there, and there's this little thing, uh, pin framed up there. It's this little saying, and it says, with a pineapple in there, it says, be a pineapple. 
stand up tall, wear a crown, and be sweet. <laughs> and I just want to add this, because you are a child of the Amen. King. Amen. Thank you, Shirley. Praise God. You know why she's so fired up? Because she fills her life with Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why. That's why. Miche? Brian and I had an opportunity to meet meeting this young lady here at the first of the school year. And it, didn't, it took us about that long to figure out that she loved Jesus. And then last night, she called us up and she was just, I mean, this lady's still on fire for Jesus. And I said, I just, you've got to come and share with our church. She, this is a young adult who loves Jesus. Where's your fire come from? Wow. Happy Sabbath, everyone. She's the dean. At, she's the assistant dean at OAA. I wasn't even going to say anything. Okay, that. she is, though. <laughs> um, wow, what a privilege <laughs> to be here. It's always good to know that um, I get to serve with other people that look different than me. So <laughs> praise God for that. Um, I'd like to start off with a few scriptures that has stood out to me. I am single. I have 37 children, that's my dorm students, and a few other. Um, I'm not married to an earthly man, but I am married to the heavenly man. Amen. So, how does the word change and help a single person? In Genesis, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face and the, and the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. When we go to John 1, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. In Psalms, it says, let the, let the, let the Word be the light unto your feet and, and the lamp unto, no, the light and lamp, either or, it brings light. Um, <laughs> and so um, I grew up in the church, but I left the church around 14, 15. Um, and that's because I didn't understand the word of God. The word of God is just not the word of God. The word of God is God. Amen. Just that simple. And so when I came back, I really had such a hard time because unfortunately, us as traditional Christians, we tend to forget where that light was. We tend to forget that we were in darkness. We tend to forget that we were without form. We tend to forget that we were in darkness. We tend to forget that it was God who said, there be light in us and he came in us. Yeah. And so my mother who was, who is, the matriarch of my family. Her and my father, um, praise God, they've been married for 36 years. It was the word that the Lord gave them that gave me the encouragement to get into the word. And so um, I just started to learn about Jesus. And as I got to learn about Jesus, of course the devil always has a way of trying to remind you of your past. I've learned that through the words, I can say, yeah, you're right, I'm a sinner. Yeah, you're right, I'm, I'm, I'm trash. But guess what, trash becomes treasure. Amen. Um, the word of God has helped me so much so that I remember praying to God and I was like, Lord, I just need to be around other people who are my age, who, you know, I mean, I get the married couple, I love them, praise God, I can learn from them, but they don't, they can't relate to me. And so the Lord, uh, opened up the door where I was able to um, join with other like-minded young adults um, and they vary I mean they are all over the world from California to North Carolina to New Jersey and I was like Lord I'm not the only one there's 7,000 out there who has not bowed down to Baal because of the word and um, but the pinnacle of this 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 that they call life is truly that in a world that looks at me and my skin color 
and chooses to, 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 to look at me as an enemy, to treat me as though I'm less than, the word has reminded me that they have done it to Jesus. And so I get one up on other people because as I continue to live in that word, I will be persecuted. I will be looked down on, but I have a place in heaven. The word mm -hmm. has, uh, you know, we look at here and, and, and a lot of people get accolades, you know, you're a MA, you're a BBA, you got a PhD. But I've learned that I got my accolade from heaven and it's heaven approved. I'm certified by his blood because I'm associated in him. I'm born again, so that makes Jesus my number one bachelor. You got a BA. <laughs> okay. You and know then, the doctor too, don't you? Okay, and then <laughs> he allows me to be a master in him, which gives me a PhD because I praise him daily. Guess what? <laughs> I get to have my doctorate in heaven. And so this word, this is not just word that I could flip through. This is word that I can live, because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is what sustained Jesus in the wilderness as it does for me here. This earth is a wilderness. The way people view is a wilderness, but guess what? I don't have to worry about anybody. I actually don't care, because heaven, I got heaven at my disposal. If I say, Lord, come, he comes right now, because he is the word. So. With that being said, um, I'm very short and sweet, like my sister shared. I am a pineapple. I'm nice and dark, <laughs> but I'm sweet on the inside because the love of Jesus constrains me. And I do wear a crown here because whatever is done here is gonna be done in heaven. So that is how the word has been the light for me. Amen. Can I, can I hold that? Let me show you something, church. You know why she's so fired up? Look at this Bible right here. I it, need a new Bible. Look at it. It's been through the. It's, it's been opened up a few times. Praise God. Praise thank God. you. Th thank you, Michelle. Yeah, Jay. You know, Jay has 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 found is doing something that that I hope and pray that we can all do, and that is sharing the word of God with other people. So I'm blessed to live with Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Shirley. Some, sometimes, I'll just speak to myself. Sometimes I do dumb things. Often I do dumb things. For example, have you ever thought, I'm going to open my Bible once a week and I'm going to read one chapter a week? And see how that goes. I will tell you that that's called the 25 year plan. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you that I am on year 20 of that plan. Kim? We're about 70%, 75% the way through the Bible. For you see, back in 2001, <clears throat> we started meeting in my office once a week for an hour. And we, re we, we read one chapter out of the Bible once a week. And then we pray for each other. We pray for our families. We pray for this church. We pray for our pastor. We ask that the Lord come into our hearts. And <clears throat> we're now in the minor prophets. Well, we've covered a lot of territory. It took us, it took us over a year to get through Isaiah. One chapter a week. And sometimes we don't have time to cover all the things we'd like to cover because we just have an hour. So we, we had a different topic we wanted to study and several weeks ago we said, well, obviously we can't cover all this in just an hour. So we started having a study in our home. And we've been doing that for the last, I don't know, six or seven weeks. So we're doing that every Friday night. 
But I just can't tell you what a blessing it is to sit down with fellow believers and to have a scheduled time. And it's not a very convenient time. It's at 6 o'clock on Monday morning. Who wants to do that? But, and, and we have, we've had, anyone's always invited. And we have people come and people go. But I know that Kim's always going to be there. And I appreciate him being there. And uh, not only have we raised many prayers, but there have been so many prayers that have been answered that I can't begin to describe those to Amen. you. How can God answer those prayers? And some of those prayers, it's like, wow, God just answered that prayer, and we've been praying that prayer for 15 years. And just now, God said it's time to answer that prayer. Praise God. So. We, we open our Bible more frequently than once a week, but we are on the once a week plan at my office. So, <laughs> if you can't sleep, show up at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, Monday, Monday mornings. Morning. <laughs> okay. This has been a powerful sermon today. Amen? Amen. Praise God. What did we learn? This is where the fuel's at. For the power stroke diesel in you. Right here, the Word of God. Fuel up. Fuel up. Uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people think that it's, it's about getting through the Bible. It's not so much about, so important to get through the Bible, is for the Bible to get through to you. Okay? It's not how fast you go, it's how deep you go. It's about seeking God. If you seek God, you will find God. Okay? Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for a powerful message of your faithfulness to those that seek you in your word. I pray for the Holy Spirit to impress upon each person the importance of spending time with you that you could, that you could open up the windows of heaven and bless their life. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.